Hi everyone, this is part 31 of ASP.NET. In the last videos, we have discussed about connection oriented architecture and we have seen uh, cascading drop down list working with execute non query method, execute scalar method, execute reader method, different examples we have seen. Today, we will discuss about disconnection oriented architecture. So, in connection oriented architecture, we need to manually open the connection and manually close the connection. The opening and closing of connection must be done manually by the programmer. In which architecture? Here we already know that in database, the data will be stored in the form of table, which is collection of rows and columns. And here we have ADO.NET. ADO.NET is a technology which is used to communicate with what? Database. Database communication technology, which one ADO.NET. Is it clear? ADO.NET, we can support two types of architectures. One is connection oriented architecture, one is connection oriented architecture, and other one is disconnection oriented architecture. ADO.NET supports two types of architectures. One is connection oriented architecture, other one is disconnection oriented architecture. Two types of architectures it will support. Okay, in connection oriented architecture, the coding will change <coughs> comparing with connection oriented architecture and disconnection oriented architecture. In connection oriented architecture, we need to manually open the connection and close the connection. Opening and closing of connection will be done manually in connection oriented architecture. In disconnection oriented architecture, no need to open the connection and no need to close the connection. So mostly when to go for connect whenever you perform insert, update, and delete operations, it is recommended to go for connection oriented architecture. <coughs> mostly whenever you want to perform select operation or any other operations, you will go for disconnection oriented architecture. Okay, so as I already told you that in connection oriented architecture, we need to manually open the connection and close the connection. In disconnection architecture, no need to open the connection, no need to close the connection. So the steps to work with disconnection oriented architecture is three steps are there. Okay, now step number one, where the design the data bound control. Design the data bound control. Step number two, prepare the data source. Step number three, attach the data source data bound control. Attach the data source to <coughs> data bound control. Three steps are there in disconnection oriented architecture. First step is design the data bound control. Second step is prepare the data source. Third step is attach the data source to the data bound control. Three steps are there. Let us see what are these steps. Okay, now. So, now let us assume here you have your database is there. In database the data will be stored in the form of table which is collection of rows and columns. Here I have one table with name EMP with column C number, E name as well as salary. Here I have 101, here Anil, some 20,000 is there. And here I have 102, here I have Sunil, here I have 30,000. Something like here I have 103, here I have Ajay, here I have 20,000. This is my database table. So in middle I have ADO.net. This is ADO.net. Okay, now, nah. and this is your database table. In database, the data will be stored in the form of table, which is collection of rows and columns. So, this is your browser actually. This is your browser. Okay, now, nah. browser, server, database server. Because whenever you develop any web application, you have to deploy that application on the server. So, this is your web server. This is your web server. The application you have to keep in web server. And database you have to keep in database server that is SQL server. Now in middle ADO.NET is there. Here you will write the ADO.NET code. So step number one to work with disconnection oriented architecture. Step number one is create the connection. Create the connection by using SQL connection class. Create the connection by using SQL connection class. So here SQL connection is a predefined class. So we need to create the connection by using SQL connection class. Okay, now, next step is pass the query. Pass the query by using SQL data adapter. Because in disconnection oriented architecture, no need to open the connection and no need to close the connection. No need to open the connection, no need to close the connection. Here the opening and closing of connection will be done automatically by SQL data adapter class. Here you have create the connection, Next step is pass the query. Pass the query by using SQL data adapter class. Are you following? Generally in connection oriented architecture, 
we will try to pass the query by using SQL connection class. Here we will try to pass the query by using SQL data adapter class. Are you following? Step number one, create the connection. Step number two, pass the query. So here whenever we pass the query, what will happen, you know, this SQL data adapter will automatically open the connection to the database server. So you no need to open the connection and close the connection. The opening and closing of connection will be done by SQL data adapter. SQL data adapter will automatically open the connection to the database server. Are you following? Here opening and closing of connection will be done auto done by SQL data adapter. Step number one, create the connection. Step number two, pass the query by using SQL data adapter class. Whenever we pass the query, then SQL data adapter class will automatically open the connection and it will execute the query. And the result of the query is stored in a result set, that is data set. So here you can write step number three, create a data set, create offer, create object for data set. So what is data set? Data set is a temporary data set. In data set, the data will be stored in the form of tables. So whenever you execute the query, the query will get executed. For example, if I write query like this, if I write a query like this, select ename comma salary from EMP, something like this. Step number one, create the connection. One minute, you wait. Create the connection, pass the query. Pass the query by using SQL data adapter class. Then create an object for a data set. Select ename comma salary from EMP. This is my query actually. Is it this is my query? So whenever you try to pass the query, then automatically SQL data adapter will automatically open the connection, execute the query, and store the result of the query in a temporary database. That is data set. All are predefined classes only. Okay now, and then what to do? Create an object for data set means you can create like this data set ds is equal to new data set of. Okay now, this is my creating an object for a data set. Okay, so step number one, create the connection. Step number two, pass the query. Step number three, create an object for a data set. Step number four, fill the result of the query. Fill the result of the query in data set. Fill the result of the query in data set. So data set is a temporary database. The query will get executed. The result of the query is stored in where? Data set. Are you following everyone? So here what I will do? Here uh, I, there is one predefined method called fill method. You can call that method. The fill method is available under data adapter. DA dot fill of DS comma some alias table name. I will explain this one later. You don't worry. Steps to work with disconnection oriented architecture. Three steps are there. I told you. Step number one: design the data bound control. Design the data bound control. That is step number one. Design the data bound control. That is step number one. Step number two: prepare the data source. <coughs> prepare data source. That is step number two. Step number three: attach data source to data bound control. Attach data source to data bound control. So here I am doing uh, which steps? Here, uh, here I am doing the uh, second step: prepare the data source. So create the connection by using SQL connection class, pass the query by using SQL data adapter. Then uh, whenever we pass the query, SQL data adapter will automatically open the connection, execute the query, and the result of the query is stored in data set. What is the result of the query? Ename and salary. Here Anil and here 20,000. And here Sunil and here 30,000. The result of the query is stored in temporary database. That is data set. Data set is a temporary database. In data set, the data will be stored in the form of table again, which is called as data type. This is step number two, prepare the data source. So whatever the data that is available in data is, I'm trying to uh, write the query. After executing the query, the result of the query is stored in data set. Once on the result of the query is stored in data set, then automatically SQL data adapter will close the connection. So yet the opening and closing of connection will be done by SQL data adapter automatically okay na? now my whatever the result i want that is stored in data set this is data set okay na? it is one type of collection actually okay na? the result of the query is stored in data set in connection oriented architecture you have result set here you have data set. now that is step number two 
Step number one, design the data bound control. Now my main target is I need to read the data from data set and display in the front end. In front end, if you want to display the data in the form of table, you have different controls are available in ASP.NET. These controls are called as data bound controls. Like uh, there are a lot of data bound controls are there, like uh, repeater control, uh, data list control, like grid view control, list view control, popular control is grid view control data bound control we need to design a data bound control it looks like what table but it is not a table actually looks like a table where to design so can asp.net supports mostly server side controls only no? microsoft has given a lot of predefined controls to display the data in the browser in the form of table these controls you can call as data bound controls so step number one design the data bound control like grid view control or data list control etc step number two prepare the data source bring the data from database and store in data set that is step number two now step number one data bound control is ready and the data source is also ready now step number three attach this particular data set data to data bound control these are the three steps you need to follow while working with disconnection oriented architecture ADO.NET supports two types of architectures connection oriented architecture and disconnection oriented architecture. In connection oriented architecture, we need, we need to manually open the connection and close the connection. Until unless user closes the connection, the connection to the database will be maintained. In disconnection oriented architecture, no need to open the connection and no need to close the connection. The opening and closing of connection will be done automatically by SQL Data Adapter class. SQL data adapter is a predefined class. Okay, now the main purpose of SQL data adapter is used to what? Uh, uh, automatically it will open the connection and it will close the connect. The opening and closing of connection will be done automatically by using SQL data adapter class. Did you understand everyone? So that is the point I'm telling here. Our main target once when the result is stored in the data set, the connection to the database will be automatically closed. Here, the opening and closing of connection will be data adapter. This is all in order to work with the disconnection oriented architecture. Here, in order to work with the disconnection oriented architecture, here Microsoft has given some ready made classes and methods. So, here we already discussed about what some uh, Microsoft has given ready made classes and methods to make our work easy. One is SQL connection class. Other one is SQL command class. Other one is SQL command class. Other one is SQL data adapter class. SQL data adapter class. Data adapter class. Other one is uh, data set class. These all are predefined classes that are given by Microsoft. And these all classes SQL connection, SQL command, SQL data adapter is available under namespace system dot data dot SQL client. Okay, now the in that namespace that is available and data set is available in system data system dot data now onwards the examples are somewhat complicated examples will be there you must be careful under SQL connect class you have some ready made methods are there like one is here you have open method is there and here you have close method is there under SQL connect class you have some ready made methods are there like execute scalar method is there execute reader method is there execute non query method is there execute reader and another method is execute non query three methods are there under sql command class are you following under sql data adapter class you have one predefined method that is fill method is there so in order to work with adio.net you have to use all these predefined classes and methods predefined classes and methods Okay, if you want to work with connection oriented architecture, mostly you will use SQL connection and SQL command class and SQL data reader also. It is also available in this namespace only. And uh, if you want to work with disconnection architecture, you have to use SQL data adapter and data set. So if you want to consume the predefined classes and methods, you have to use the namespace. So whenever you work with the disconnection oriented architecture, you have to use the two namespaces data.sql client and system.data. Did you understand everyone? So that is how you can work. In the next video, I will discuss some more examples. For more videos, try to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.